J.K. Rowling is famous for creating names that have deeper meanings in the Harry Potter series. Some names are references to real people, others are word associations from all different languages, and some just have special meaning to her herself. In this video, I'm going to go through 46 different characters' names and explain the deeper meaning behind each one. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button, it will greatly help the channel with the algorithm. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, and you can also follow me on all of my other social medias, all of which are linked down below, and all of which house similar content that I make here on this channel. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. Harry Potter Harry was JK Rowling's favorite boy name, but there's more to it than that. Many believe that she got the name Harry from the real-life famous magician Harry Houdini from the 1900s. As for the last name Potter, Potter's Field is often the name given to a cemetery that buries those who have gone unclaimed or unwanted when a city falls, essentially being a community's orphan, which aligns with Harry who becomes an orphan and is unwanted by the Dursleys. Ron Weasley the first name Ron can be tied to King Arthur's main advisor, Ron Ominiad, just like Ron Weasley is always beside Harry for big decisions and events, essentially being Harry's advisor. And as for the last name Weasley, JK Rowling actually talked about this, saying that she always loved weasels as a kid and wanted to incorporate it into her fantasy story. Weasels are sometimes famous for having red hair, just like every single Weasley has red hair in the series. They also live in Ottery St. Catchpole, which is noteworthy because an otter is a member of the Weasel family. Hermione Granger The first name Hermione is the feminine version of Hermes in Greek mythology, and she was often known as the patron saint of high magic, which goes along with Hermione being so gifted with magic. Hermione was also a character in Shakespeare's A Winter's Tale, where the character is made into a statue and then comes back to life at the end of the play, which could align with Hermione being petrified by the basilisk in the second book and coming back at the end of the novel. As for the last name Granger, this could be a nod to the Granger movement in the 1800s, which improved the lives of farmers. This could match up with Hermione creating SPEW to make better lives for the house elves. Granger is also the name of a character from the book Fahrenheit, who was the leader of a group of intellectuals known as the Book People, whose goal is the preservation of literature when the government was trying to burn books. This also aligns with Hermione, who has a great love for books. Ginny Weasley The name Ginny is short for Ginerva, and there was an old myth about a woman named Ginerva who locked herself in a trunk on her wedding day. She trapped herself, and her skeleton was discovered much later. This aligns with what was written on the wall about Ginny in the second book, her skeleton will lie in the chamber forever. Draco Malfoy There's a lot with his first name. Draco is a constellation that looks like a dragon, but is actually a snake, which refers to his house Slytherin, whose mascot is a snake. Draco could also be taken from the word draconian, which means harsh or cruel, which very much aligns with Draco's character. As for the last name Malfoy, in Latin, malus means bad, which many would say Draco is bad, and mal means pale, which is a trait that Rowling often used to describe Malfoy's physical appearance. Looking deeper, Malfoy means loss of faith, which the entire Malfoy family does when they lose their faith in Voldemort and his cause. And a similar phrase, Malfate, means evil deeds, which the Malfoy family carried out too many times to count. Albus Dumbledore The first name Albus means white in Latin, which of course refers to his long white hair and beard. Albus could also refer to a governor in Britain named Claude's Albinus, who made an alliance with another imperial contender, Septimus Severus. This is very noteworthy considering that Albus and Severus Snape have an alliance in the Harry Potter books, just like Septimus Severus and Claude's Albinus. Looking at the last name Dumbledore, in Old English, this name means Bumblebee. JK Rowling said that she chose this name because she imagined Dumbledore walking around the castle humming to himself. Fred and George Weasley Fred and George are both named after people in the British royal family. George becomes king after the untimely loss of Frederick, meaning their names predicted Fred's ultimate fate of dying. George didn't become king, but he did become the person leading and running their joke shop, which one could say was the twins' kingdom. Sirius Black Sirius was named after the star Sirius, which is also known as the Dog Star. This makes perfect sense, as he has the ability to turn into a black dog at will being an animagus. In Egyptian mythology, they believe that when you die, your soul would go into the star Sirius. This aligns with Sirius Black's death as he went into a veil of souls. Severus Snape 
Severus could be a play on the word sever, meaning to cut off, which refers to how Snape cut off his ties with the Dark Lord. Severus could also refer to the word severe, meaning cruel and strict, both of which describe Snape as a teacher. The name Severus is also mentioned in Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, which is one of J.K. Rowling's favorite books. As for the last name Snape, Rowling actually named him after someone she knew in real life. Yikes to whoever that person is. Minerva McGonagall Minerva is the Roman counterpart of the Greek goddess Athena, a woman in mythology who resonates wisdom, which describes McGonagall pretty well. And similarly, her last name McGonagall is a form of Celtic that means the bravest, which also aligns with who Minerva McGonagall is. Lord Voldemort If you translate each section of the name in French, Vol de Mort, it means flight from death or escaping death, which was Voldemort's lifelong goal when making his horcruxes. Meanwhile, Vold in Danish means violence, which Voldemort spread a great deal of. Tom Riddle The last name Riddle of course refers to a riddle or a word puzzle, which is sort of what his full name Tom Marvolo Riddle is as it spells out I am Lord Voldemort in an anagram. Looking at his first name Tom, this name can sometimes mean twin, which goes along with Tom Riddle being the spitting image of his father, whose first name was also, you guessed it, Tom. Remus Lupin The first name Remus is taken from the Roman myth Romulus and Remus, the tale of the twin brothers who were raised by a she-wolf. And the last name Lupin is derived from the Latin word lupus, which means wolf. Both of these things line up perfectly with Remus Lupin being a werewolf. Rubius Hagrid Breaking down Hagrid, the name Grid was a Norse giantess, and the Ha is a variant of the Old West Norse name meaning half. So putting that together, you get half giant, which is exactly what Hagrid is, as his mother was a giantess and his father was a human. Bellatrix Lestrange Breaking up her first name, Bella is a construct of the word bellum, meaning war, and Trix refers to a woman in power. Putting those together, you get a female warrior, which is exactly what Bellatrix was for Voldemort. As for her last name Lestrange, this is a play on the word estranged, which means to be removed from society. This goes along with her being removed from society while she was locked up in Azkaban, which is where she was when we were introduced to her character. Nymphadora Tonks Nymphadora translates to gift of the nymphs, and nymphs are female spirits in Greek mythology that can change shape, which Tonks is of course able to do as well, being a metamorph magus. As for her last name Tonks, this sometimes means a fool or an idiot, which I guess goes along with how clumsy she is. Lucius Malfoy In Shakespeare's play Julius Caesar, the character Lucius is the servant of Brutus, the leader of the conspirators, which aligns with Lucius Malfoy being the servant of Lord Voldemort. Lucius could also come from Lucifer, aka the devil, which Lucius sometimes lives up to with his cruel ways. Alistair Moody the first name Alistair comes from Alistair in Scottish Gaelic, which is a form of Alexander, which means defender of mankind. This adds up to Alistair Moody, who fights as an Auror to protect the Wizarding World. As for the last name Moody, in Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Blithdale Romance, there is a character called Moody who wears a patch over his eye. This matches up with Moody, who was of course missing an eye. Nagini in Urdu, the word Nagin means female snake, which is literally what Nagini is, a female snake. In the language Pali, the word Nega refers to a great deity or entity that takes the shape of a large snake, which is also what Nagini does in the Fantastic Beast films being a Maledictus. And the female Nega is called, you guessed it, Nagini. Many say that this is proof that Rowling always intended to have Nagini's backstory be that she was once a human, long before the Fantastic Beast films came along. Lily Potter Lily is a flower symbolizing purity and innocence, both of which go along with everything we know about Lily Potter. The lily is also a flower commonly paired with immortality, which goes along with Lily's sacrifice allowing Harry to live on. Kingsley Shacklebolt Kingsley's job as an Auror is to lock people up in Azkaban, and breaking down his last name, both Shackle and Bolt refer to means of imprisonment. Considering that he is a black character, Shackle and Bolt could also be a reference to slavery in early America. And going off of that, his first name Kingsley could be inspired by Martin Luther King Jr., who made the famous Eye of a Dream speech. Creature the House Elf Creature is similar to the German word creature, derived from the verb creechen, meaning to creep, 
which Creature always does throughout the Grimwald Place house. Creature could also be a play on the English word creature, which is often used for an imaginary being, typically a frightening one, which also aligns with Creature the House Elf. Olymp Maxime. In French, Olymp means Olympus, referring to Mount Olympus, the home of the gods in Greek mythology. Gods that are often massive compared to human beings, which references how tall Maxime is. And the last name Maxime could be a play on the English word maximum, meaning the biggest size you can get, which also goes along with her massive height. Peter Pettigrew. Breaking down his last name to Petty and Grew, this could mean he grew into a petty, narrow-minded person. The name could also be from the French Pettigross, meaning little fat person, which describes Peter's physical appearance. Quirinus Quirrell. In Roman mythology, Quirinus was abused by Janus, Janus being a god who has a face on both the front and back of his head, which refers to the man with two faces. Janus in this case is also Voldemort, as just like in Roman mythology, he abuses Quirinus. Then the last name Quirrell was derived from the word quarrel, which means an angry dispute or argument, which Quirinus Quirrell had with both Snape and Voldemort several times in the first book. Sybil Trelawney. Her first name Sybil comes from the Sybils, who were famous prophets in ancient mythology. This aligns with her divine power to predict the future with her prophecies, and of course how she teaches divination. Pomona Sprout. To sprout means to spring up and grow, which goes along with her life ambition to grow plants as the herbology professor. Rita Skeeter. Skeeter is short for mosquito, which many would agree is the most annoying insect on earth, just like Rita is the most annoying reporter and person. Also, she too can turn into an insect, in her case a beetle, as she is an animagus. Cornelius Fudge. Fudge can mean nonsense, which is what this character is always spewing out. As a verb, fudge can mean to evade or to falsify. This also adds up as he evades admitting that Voldemort is back, and he falsifies news to slander Harry and Dumbledore. As for the first name Cornelius, there was a Roman general named Lucius Cornelius Sulla who was forced out by the people just as Fudge was forced out of office by the Wizarding World. Andromeda Tonks For the first name Andromeda, in Greek mythology, a woman with the same name was supposed to marry her uncle Phineas, but instead she marries the hero Perseus. This is similar to how Andromeda Tonks was supposed to marry a pureblood, which that too often leads to incest, but instead she married someone she wasn't supposed to, marrying the muggle-born Ted Tonks. Charlie Weasley Charlie is short for Charles, a name that often means manly and strong, which is how Charlie is described in the book being stocky and having muscled arms. Fenrir Greyback the first name Fenrir is from Norse mythology, and there it means a gigantic, terrible monster in the shape of a wolf, which is literally what Fenrir Greyback is as a werewolf. As for the last name, Greyback is a play on the term Silverback, which we use to distinguish the dominant male in a band of gorillas. We all know that Fenrir Greyback holds that dominant role for werewolves in the Wizarding World. Dolores Umbridge Breaking down her first name, Dolores means deceitful in Greek, which we can all agree matches up with Umbridge's character. As for her last name Umbridge, this is a play on the word Umbridge, which means to take offense or to feel resented, which she makes many people feel when interacting with her. Fleur Delacour In French, Fleur means flower, and adding her last name Delacour to that, it means flower of the court. The end of Delacour could also be a play on the French word cour, which means heart, because villas captivate men's hearts. And cour could also be a derivative of the word coerce, which villas are often able to do to men using their attractive powers. Petunia Dursley. A petunia flower often symbolizes anger and resentment, which Petunia Dursley has plenty of for her sister Lily, the Wizarding World, and too many other things to even count. As for the last name Dursley, it was the name of a town near J.K. Rowling's birthplace. Argus Filch The name Argus comes from the name of a monster from Greek mythology who had 100 eyes and was known to be watchful. This matches up with Filch who carefully watches over the castle of Hogwarts and it often seems as though he has more than just two eyes. Gilderoy Lockhart for the first name Gilderoy, there was a famous highwayman who was known for being extremely handsome, just like Lockhart. Meaning may also be found in the word gilded, which is defined as having a pleasing, showy appearance which covers something of little worth, which is exactly what Lockhart embodies, being handsome on the outside but having little worth on the inside, both magically and intelligently. 
As for the last name Lockhart, there was a famous psychologist who had the same name, and his particular expertise was in the study of memory, which is pretty much the only thing Gilderoy Lockhart could do well, memory charms. Moaning Myrtle Myrtle is a type of evergreen shrub that is often overlooked because of its plainness, which matches up with Moaning Myrtle, who is often unnoticed as the nerdy plain looking girl. Aragog Breaking down the name, we get the era from the word arachnid, which means spider, and Gog was the name of a legendary giant. So put that together and you get giant spider, which is exactly what Aragog is. Ludo Bagman the first name, Ludo, is the Latin word meaning I play, which aligns with the character Ludo who likes to play his luck. I play could also refer to him playing professional Quidditch. As for the last name Bagman, Bagman is a person who collects money in a dishonest way, which is exactly what his character does throughout the whole fourth book, making bets and keeping all the gold for himself, not giving out the winnings. Peeves the Poltergeist the word peeve means little devil, which he represents pretty perfectly, always causing mischief around the school. And peeve can also mean something that gets on your nerve, which you've probably heard in the phrase pet peeve. And peeves the poltergeist certainly does get on people's nerves at Hogwarts with his pranks and shenanigans. Cedric Diggory Cedric is Old English for chief or war leader, which aligns with him being the captain of the Hufflepuff Quidditch team and also being one of the most popular kids in school. Victor Crumb Victor is a play on the English word victor, meaning the winner or the victorious one. This is appropriate for arguably the best seeker in the wizarding world, even though he did lose in the Quidditch World Cup in the Goblet of Fire. But don't worry, he became the victor when he came out of retirement and won the Quidditch World Cup 20 years later. Xenophilius Lovegood Xenophilius is a play on the word xenophilia, which means to have love or affection for alien things or people, which explains Xenophilius' love for all things strange. Fox the Phoenix In 1605, a man named Guy Fox tried to blow up the House of Parliament as an act of rebellion. In England, November 5th is now known as Guy Fox Day, and on that day, they burn a statue of him. Every year, he is resurrected to burn again and again, which is exactly what Fox the Phoenix does. He dies in flames and is resurrected each time. Colin Creevy the first name Colin means youth and child, which matches how he's often depicted being a young kid compared to Harry, even though he's only a year younger, which is weird. Colin can also mean young dog, which fits with how he follows Harry around like a dog, and also how he has great devotion to Harry the way a dog might. And that is the deeper meaning of 46 different Harry Potter characters' names. Let me know in the comments below which one you found to be the most fascinating. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. That's all I have for you guys today though, so I will see you in the next video.